The fights over the weekend. If you listen to your boy, I told you TJ as a dog ain't a bad bet, is it? Ain't a bad bet. Your boy wins some money. I hate Ben against Corey Sandhagen. Phenomenal fight. One of the best bantamweight fights in a long ass time. I'm just, I'm blown away by, by TJ. Two and a half year layoff, comes back, fights the number one contender, should be fighting for a title. Um, but obviously the Aljamain Sterling and the uh, Peter Yan fight ended in that weird controversy with the knee to the face. So that postposed things. So Corey has to take a fight. Ends up fighting TJ Dillashaw, which uh, bad for him, ended up losing. So he gets, I don't think... He loses any kind of ground there in the in the in the rankings. I'm sure everybody was up in arms about the decision or you know who you thought was going to win. <laughs> to me, it was pretty clear. You know, I'm, I'm really close with one of TJ's coaches, and we were texting during the fight. Um, you know, th this the the way I would best describe this fight is TJ won the sport. So when you look at mixed martial arts. There's a judging criteria, and if you know the way the sport is judged and you viewed it as that, you would have TJ the winner. If you looked at it as a fight, you would have Corey as the winner. And you're both right. You're both right. But in the sport, which is the way these guys get paid, and it's very black and white, TJ won that fight pretty handedly. I, you know, I had it 2-2 going into the fifth, and I had TJ barely winning that fifth round. Um, and here's what's fascinating about this is TJ did it on one leg. He blew out his goddamn knee. And when he blew out his knee, uh, I thought, oh, he's screwed. With the movement, and Corey's such a savage with his movement and his angles, and it, it, he's, he's hard enough to hit when you have both legs, let alone doing it on one leg. And it definitely changed the course of the fight, but, you know, I found myself, I'm such a big Corey Sanhagen fan, and I'll put it like this. Corey's going to be champ. I promise you Corey will be your champion at Bantamweight. He's young. This is, an ex this is a learning experience for him. He's very young. Corey will be your champ. There was so much more on the line as far as the projection of TJ's career opposed to Corey Sanhagen. Because TJ, two and a half year layoff, you know, he's, he's getting longer in the tooth. Was he 36? Is he 36, Jen? 35, 36? If he loses this one, the road to get back there is going to be a bit of a bitch. You know, it's pretty jammed. The 35, 35, two and a half year layoff, you know. So so if you're TJ, two and a half year layoff, your last fight you lost to, to uh, Henry Cejudo, right, at 125. You tested hot for EPO. And so there was so much pressure going into this fight for TJ, way more pressure than Corey. For Corey, obviously, he took a gamble taking a fight, not waiting for a title shot. Didn't end up working out for him. Corey's going to be fine. So I found myself, I love both of these guys. I hate that they fought each other. But I found myself rooting a little more for TJ just because what was on the line for him. Two and a half year layoff, you have all the naysayers who go, oh, the only reason he ever won fights was because of the PED, stuff like that. Um, he loses this. At 35, it, it's not going to look pretty. So going into the fight, there's just so much, so much more pressure on TJ to perform and I do think ring rust was a factor, and it really showed in his timing. Usually TJ's timing's a, a little more crisp, a little more on. So I thought his timing was a tad off. And then you mix in, you blow out your goddamn knee, and then you mix in the cut. And just for those of you that have never been in a fight and got cut and have the blood pouring in your eye, uh, which your thick friend here has, I want you to, if you want to feel what it what it's like, take oil. Take oil from a car or cooking oil and pour it in your eye. Because it's not like uh, water where it runs in your eye, you can just wick it away and you're all good. As it pours in, blood is very oily. And it, it's, it's, it, it, it compromises your vision for the entire fight. So if you're TJ, think how much of a badass he is. Blows out his knee. One of the worst cuts you've ever seen. And also what makes this worse is it wasn't from left to right. It was from north to south. So you're going across multiple muscles in the face, which is the worst case scenario. So you have a cut in the worst spot possible, blood rushing into your eye, oil rushing into your eye. So you have one eye, one leg, and you're fighting Corey the Sandman Sandhagen, this fucking young savage who you've trained with before, and people say maybe got the better of you in training and stuff like that. There's a lot of history there. So for him to, to blow out his knee, to take a, a dam the damage of the eye like he did, and not only 
that obviously he lost that second round, but come back in that third and win it, it just shows you the volume of what kind of savage you're dealing with in TJ Dillashaw. It's in, it's insane, dude. And if that doesn't make you a fan, then you're an idiot. How about that? If you're not a fan of TJ now, and for all you naysayers out there went, well, the only reason he went, I don't, even if you're a fighter, the people go, oh, he doesn't look the same. You know, it, it, the only reason he ever won those other fights because he was on EPO. Well, he wasn't this time. Look, Pretty good. Beat the number one guy in the world, not named Aljamain Stern or Peter Young, on one leg and one eye. Mm-hmm. So, so where, so where you at now? Where, where's the EPO and P, PD talk now? Uh, crickets, crickets. So he shut up all those naysayers, got the job done, and now he's in line for a title shot. And have they, have they decided when uh, Aljamain and Peter Young are fighting? It says uh, October 30th. Perfect. So that fight's going to happen. Obviously, they're both going to get pretty fucked up unless something <laughs> wild happens. So you, you, TJ's probably looking at fighting for a title early 2022, which he's going to need some time with that cut. That cut's brutal. That cut. And then I don't. do we know how bad his leg was damaged? Don't know. I think for Corey, the biggest kind of takeaway from it is he, what he does is, and it's a, what a lot of new newer age jujitsu guys do. You don't see a lot of old school guys doing it. When, when he, when he rolls those Granby rolls, he's constantly giving TJ his back. And it's not that TJ was doing anything on the back, but that's control. That would be a form of octagon control. So every time Corey would roll for whatever fucking reason, not do anything with it, he would roll and just kind of hand fight with the, the, on his hip. Well, as TJ's around his back, that's octagon control. So those are rounds. Those are points for TJ. Every time he would roll and TJ would get his back, even though he wasn't doing anything, but he's pressuring forward, though that's a victory for TJ. For the life of me, if Corey's going to roll, do those Granby rolls and roll like that, you have to A, make it count, and B, do something with it. You can't just allow, a, especially a wrestler, to get your back and ride you out, man. You can't. You're losing the fight. And I know for fans, it's it's like, well, Corey land the bigger shots? Agree 100%. Corey land the bigger shots? Corey did more damage? Agree with that 100%. But in the sport of MMA, when you're giving your back like that and you're allowing a guy to control the octagon, dictate where the fight goes... And then, you know, it's not that TJ's doing the damage. It's just a, a, the, in the sport of mixed martial arts, that's winning rounds. And that's why TJ eventually got the nod. And if you look back to the prior uh, judges' decisions, I thought it was even more so that TJ was going to win this fight. Because, you know, sometimes those judges are morons. So a lot of times, you know, they don't award guys points for that stuff because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. But in this case, these judges got it right. I would have even been okay with the draw, even though I did have TJ winning. I don't think anybody got robbed. If they give to Corey, I'm like, all right, yeah, he did a lot of damage. You might have gave that 10-8 round, you know, the second round, and then you could might be able to edge it out for the fifth and give it to Corey. I can see that. There's no argument there. But give it to TJ, that's how I scored it. I think that's how a lot of other analysts in the game scored it. Um, I, I thought TJ, you know, with one leg, one eye, did pretty fucking well, man. But there was definitely a case of ring rust there with his timing. Um, and But even his even his timing before the leg got blown out was was off. And then it even looked even worse because when you shoot in, especially I think it was the fourth round we shot in for that double, usually TJ finishes that, but he's, he's, on, he's on one fucking leg. So there's no drive-through, so it was just control thing. So you see him drive through. And then come up to the hips and run to the cage. That's control. That's control, man. Those are points, and that's why I won the fight. So I get how some people can be disgruntled that TJ won the fight, but ah, you, you, you got to know how the, how the fight goes. You got to know the fight game a little better. So the, for, the, for, for the first time in the history of the global scorecard, we have a dead even draw. Yeah, I'm fine with the draw. Verdict MMA, yeah. It's officially the most competitive fight we've ever recorded right down to the decimal point. Wow. Literally, the final was 47.52. Both sides. Yeah, I thought TJ's uh, leg kicks were good. Again, um, he was very successful in the first round. Once that knee got blown out, you could see it compromised his his uh, footwork. Um, you know, and, and for TJ, just hats off to him. To two and a half year layoff, dude, and you're fighting a guy who's active and he's a fucking killer. And how about TJ's jaw? How about that knee to the face? Insane, dude. Nuts. Um, so... 
again, if I was TJ's management, I would have said, let, let's not fight again in the top five. Let's let's fight someone else. But that's what makes TJ TJ. And he wanted, he, he wanted to fight Peter Yan. That's what he wanted. But obviously, Peter Yan had that issue with Al Jermaine. So, like, right, who do you want? And he asked for Corey Sandahagen. And it was the right move. It was the right move. He ended up winning. Now he's going to fight for a title. Again, for, for Corey, I think he has to get out of this He's almost in this Zen space. And his coach, Christian Allen, who I know very well, who I came up with for eight years, it's this very Zen, like spiritual, like, you know, free flow stuff like that, which is great. And obviously he's downloaded all that into Corey. But, but you, and you, when you get finishes, it works out great. But, you know, when you're fighting guys at this championship level, like TJ Dillashaw, you got to, you got to put rounds in the bank. And Corey, to me, wasn't doing that. You know, he's a, he's a finisher, and he has great knees and elbows and punches, and his counter striking's fantastic, and his footwork's fantastic. But his learning experience from this, I'm like, all right, I can't grab roll all the fucking time, just give people my back. Um, who, who's the guy, I'm forgetting his fucking name. The, he's kind of nerdy. He got lit up. Uh, Ryan Hall. You know, he does a lot of Gramby rolling, and you know, you're going for those submissions and the leg stuff like that. At, a, at the high, highest level, that stuff doesn't work. It doesn't. Hate to tell you guys that. Doesn't work. The, the, those guys, especially those wrestlers with their base, stuff like that, and the, they're going to punch you in the face. And so you got to know when to use that Granby rule. And it just it, it just wasn't there for Corey. And that's why, to me, that's why he lost the fight. If he wasn't doing that stuff and TJ wasn't controlling him getting his back, Corey wins this probably three to two, maybe four to one. Um, but again, how that says it's the close fight in whatever UFC history and it was a draw, I'm fine with I'm I'm cool with draws. They don't do them enough. But... Uh, I had TJ win in that fight. I did have TJ win that fight. So now he's going to fight for a world title. And I would assume that happens maybe end of December, depending how Al Jermaine, Peter Yon go, or early January, February 2022, which is perfect timing for TJ.